Picture a guy who buys the same pickup truck every year, same brand, same look, but each year he fixes the weak spots, stronger frame, better brakes, better cooling, easier to repair. After a few years, it is still the same truck, but it is a different animal. That is what SpaceX is doing with the Super Heavy Booster for Starship. They are not just making a rocket, they are making a machine they can use again and again like an airplane. Version 3 is where that idea starts to look real. It is a stack of changes that all point to one goal. Carry more, control fuel better, land more reliably, get caught by the tower, then fly again fast. Super Heavy is the first stage, which just means the bottom part. It it does the heavy lifting off the ground and carries the upper ship on top. It weighs as much as 15 city buses when empty. When full of fuel, it is much heavier. Here is the first reveal. Version 3 is taller. It goes from about 70 meters to about 80 meters. That is a 10 meter increase, which is about the height of a three-story building. That extra height is mostly fuel tank. More tank means more fuel, and more fuel solves a problem SpaceX ran into with earlier boosters. They were running low on fuel when they needed it most. Not at liftoff, but after separation when they must turn around, slow down, and land. If you have ever driven a car that had a weak fuel gauge, you know the stress. You think you have enough to get home, then the engine coughs. Now imagine that happens at 56 miles up. You cannot pull over. You either have fuel or you don't. The booster needs that fuel for three big moves, turning around, pushing back toward the launch site, and slowing down for the catch. Version 3 changes how fuel is moved inside the booster. This is not a small detail because fuel sloshes like water in a half-full bucket. When the tank is mostly empty, that slosh gets worse and can tilt the booster. The engines can then suck gas instead of liquid, which is bad. Engines want steady liquid flow like a garden hose needs water and not air bubbles. SpaceX added a bigger central methane transfer tube. Methane is the fuel, which is like natural gas cooled down until it becomes a liquid. It is so cold it would freeze your skin instantly. They built a main fuel highway down the middle that is as serious as the fuel system in a whole other rocket. This means they want faster and more reliable delivery to all 33 engines. Those 33 engines are what create the push to lift the rocket. Version 3 brings in Raptor 3 engines. Each one is said to deliver about 280 tons of thrust, which is engine power. Think of thrust like how hard your car pushes you back into the seat when you floor it. Except here it is insane. 280 tons is like the weight of about 200 pickup trucks. Multiply by 33 engines and you get about 9,240 tons of total engine power. That is more than the weight of an entire Navy destroyer. It is the most powerful powerful rocket stage ever built on paper. SpaceX says Raptor 3 is simplified with fewer delicate parts. This is like taking a complicated car engine and removing the extra plastic parts that crack and break so a mechanic can reach everything fast. A lighter booster is a big win because the same engine power produces more speed. Raptor 3 mass is said to drop from around 1,630 kilograms to about 1,525 kilograms. That is a drop of about 105 kilograms per engine, which is like losing the weight of a full-grown man. Multiply that by 33, and you save about 3,465 kilograms. That is like dropping the weight of a big SUV from the booster's engine section. If the engine gets lighter and stronger at the same time, the whole rocket can carry more cargo or keep more safety margin. These are the knobs every rocket builder fights over. SpaceX is trying to prove that space can become routine. Not easy or safe like driving to work, but repeatable enough that big plans become regular schedules. Now let's look at the financial side of things. One SLS launch costs $4.1 billion according to NASA's own Inspector General. That's billion with a B. For comparison, Starship is supposed to cost about $10 million per launch once it's fully working. Let's put that in perspective. One SLS launch costs 410 times more than one Starship launch. That same 4.1 billion could pay for 410 Starships
Starship launches. Or think of it another way, SpaceX could launch Starship every single day for more than a year for what NASA pays for one SLS flight. When you're trying to build stuff in space, those numbers matter a lot. Building these boosters costs a lot for steel, engines, and labor. If you throw them away, you need to build endless new ones. If you catch and reuse, each booster can do multiple flights. It is like buying a good set of tools that are expensive once but cheap over time. Programs that fly often and learn fast get more contracts while those that fly rarely and stay expensive lose ground. This is how markets work because results win. SpaceX is pushing the frontier while others like Boeing have struggled lately with schedule and execution. This slows the overall industry and leaves SpaceX carrying more of the load. Competition is healthy, so Boeing being slow is not good news. It leaves an opening for others, including China. China already runs their own space station, and they are working on reusable rockets. They are not at Starship scale yet, but they are aiming there. The gap can close faster than people think when one company shows a path and others copy it. Version 3 being taller means the fuel tanks are longer. Longer tanks change structure structural loads, which are just forces. It is like how a longer ladder bends more under the same weight. The booster must be stiff enough to handle 33 engines shaking at once. That is like having 33 jackhammers running under a steel tower. That vibration can crack welds if the structure is not right. SpaceX has to balance lightweight with strength, which is hard because stronger often means heavier. Engineering at this scale is unforgiving. Colder fuel also changes things because metal shrinks when chilled. Seals, pipes, and valves must handle that. A valve is just a door for liquid, and if it sticks, the system can fail. The delay pushed the moon landing from 2026 to sometime in 2027. Here's why that matters. China says they're going to land people on the moon in 2030. Originally, the US was going to beat them by four years. Now it's only three years, and if NASA delays again, which their own inspector general says is likely, that gap drops to two years. China has been really good at hitting their deadlines. Their space station, built on time. Their moon robots, on time. Their astronaut launches, on time. NASA's recent record is the opposite. Things keep getting delayed, so these timelines are getting closer and closer. Version 3 being taller is a signal that the earlier design hit a limit. They learned where the edge was, and then they moved it. That is how you climb the competence ladder. SpaceX is not just building Starship, they are planning versions like car models. After V1, V2, and V3, there is V4. V4 is not a small upgrade. It is like going from a normal pickup to a heavy-duty diesel with a longer bed and a bigger engine. V4 is planned to be bigger than V3 in both parts. People talk about a booster around 81 meters tall and a ship around 61 meters tall. The full stack would be about 142 meters, which is taller than a 40-story building. A taller rocket can hold more fuel, and more fuel means more energy for cargo or range. The fuel load for V4 is planned to be around 4,000 tons. That is like 650 African elephants or 2,600 average cars. Holding that much very cold fuel means the tanks must be strong and the plumbing must be tight. Engine power for V4 is discussed around 10,000 tons of push. That is the push you would need to lift 10,000 small cars straight up at once. It is an explosive push held steady for minutes. The engine count might change too, with people talking about 42 engines across the whole stack. Some are sea level engines for near the ground, and some are vacuum engines for space. A vacuum engine has a bigger nozzle, which is like the mouth of the engine. Bigger mouths work better in space, kind of like breathing through a wide tube instead of a straw. Imagine the booster is seconds from the catch. It lights the engines, but the oxygen feed hiccups because the tank sloshed. That hiccup could happen in a split second and the engines could cough. The booster could tilt and miss the tower arms by meters. A miss could mean a huge steel tower and a giant booster colliding, which could wreck the pad for months. SpaceX is designing to prevent that single hiccup. They added a side-mounted liquid oxygen header tank, which is like a small reserve tank. It keeps pressure steady when the main supply fluctuates. 
This feeds the inner 13 engines during the final landing burn to give a stable supply where it matters most. Hot staging means the upper ship lights its engines before it fully separates. Fire blasts down while the booster is still there. In earlier versions, they used a heavy ring to guide this fire, but it was thrown away every time. Version 3 builds hot staging into the booster structure so there is less dead weight. In rockets, weight is everything. Every extra ton of steel is a ton of cargo you cannot carry. Cutting weight is like cleaning out your garage before moving so you do not have to haul junk. Integrated hot staging means fewer parts to throw away and a higher launch frequency. If you want weekly launches, you cannot afford to rebuild big parts every time. Grid fins are those big metal waffle fins that help steer the booster during the fall. They are like the fins on a dart or flaps on a plane wing. They create air resistance to control the fall. Version 3 changes these fins to use 3 instead of 4 and moves them lower. This can be smart because 3 points can give better control with less weight, like a tripod stool. Moving them lower helps the booster behave better in thick air and helps it line up for the catch. They also want to protect the fins from the fire of hot staging. You cannot reuse a booster if you melt the parts used for steering. Raptor engines can change their power smoothly, kind of like how you can press the gas pedal in your car a little or a lot. They go from 40% power to 100% power with everything in between. The older RD-180 engines from Russia are more like an on-off switch. They're either at full blast or they're off. This matters because when you're trying to land a rocket, you need to be able to adjust the power very precisely to keep it balanced. It's like trying to balance on one foot, you need small adjustments. SpaceX rockets can do that. Rockets with RD-180 engines can't. That's why one can land and the other can't. 33 engines also means you need fuel flow that stays stable with no sudden drops. Imagine a house with 33 showers running at once. If someone flushes a toilet and the water pressure drops, everyone screams. Pressure drops in a rocket can cause the engine to stop burning. SpaceX must design plumbing like an industrial plant with big pipes and good sensors. The tanks must keep pressure steady as the fuel drains. If the booster can lift 250 tons and be reused, the cost per ton can drop a lot. It is like moving furniture with one truck trip instead of five to save fuel. V4 targets flights in 2027, which means it is a future build and not for the next flight. Before V4, V3 has to prove that reuse can be repeated. If V3 cannot fly, land, and fly again often, V4 is just a taller paper cup. V4 depends on V3 success first. A booster around 81 meters tall is also a manufacturing test to see if you can build giant giant rings fast and keep the quality high. If you are off by a few millimeters on each ring, it adds up. Over 81 meters, small errors become big alignment issues. The teams that can keep that tight will be at the top of the factory. SpaceX did this kind of leap before, and you can see the pattern. First, they learned to land the Falcon 9 until it became routine. Then they proved boosters could be flown many times when people doubted it. Finally, they pushed launch counts far above their competitors. It is the same pattern of rapid tests and rapid fixes. They want more than 100 flights from a single booster before it is retired. Falcon 9 reuse was a revolution, but super heavy reuse is meant to feel boring. Boring means predictable, and predictable means cheap. Frequent launches mean space stops being special and starts being normal. Imagine an engine test stand where an engine is hitting target power. Everything looks good, but a pressure sensor spikes just a little outside the expected line. An engineer calls it out and they decide to cut the test 30 seconds early. Later, they find a tiny blockage that could have caused a hot spot to melt metal like butter on a pan. That one decision avoids a blown engine and losing time. This is the kind of edge space lives on. Big rockets often fail in boring ways like a small leak or a loose connector. On a 33-engine booster, any small problem can spread fast. That is why you see many ground tests and hold calls to pause the countdown. If Starship hits 200-plus tons to orbit while being fully reusable, it changes everything for science in the military. Telescopes could be bigger and stations could be built faster. This is like switching from delivery vans to freight trains for the big job. 
jobs. Competitors will either have to chase full reuse or focus on smaller areas. Europe might focus on specialized missions while China pushes heavy lift with state planning. The winner is not just the biggest rocket, but the one that flies often and safely. This weight cut story is about a culture of removing parts. Most companies add parts to fix problems, but SpaceX tries to fix the root cause and remove the extra parts. Fewer parts means fewer failure points. Version 3 is not just bigger, it is smarter. It has more fuel so the booster can do its return job without starving. It has better plumbing so engines get steady flow during stressful moves. There is a dedicated oxygen reserve tank so the landing burn is not ruined by slosh. It has integrated hot stage to cut weight and a new fin layout for stability. The new engine version aims for power and simplicity. Think of a man learning to catch a heavy toolbox thrown from a ladder. At first he drops it, then he stumbles, then he catches it clean. Version 3 is SpaceX putting better handles on the toolbox and adding padding where it hits. The next real test will be a real launch with separation 56 miles up. There will be a real boost back and a real fall through the thick air. And then there is that moment near the pad when the booster lines up with those giant arms. If version 3 does what it claims, it will come back with control and with safety margin. It will turn rockets into a routine tool instead of a once a year miracle. Picture a monster truck rally with 33 trucks lined up in a tight circle, all flooring it at the same time. That is the basic idea behind version 3 Super Heavy. It is the giant first part that lifts everything off the ground. Version 3 is the newest style SpaceX is aiming for with those 33 Raptor 3 engines.